what about the mythology and musicality of Imaginos do you think has kept the fire going in you and all these years to then work again on it in 2020 and now again in 2023? I mean, having, especially with what, ju what you just told me, what yeah. keeps bringing you back to it? Okay, so, well, one of the things is that when it did come out, I had heard that Sandy was disappointed. We didn't talk about it, but I was extremely disappointed. Number one, I didn't like how it sounded. I thought that it was, uh, it was all muffled, uh, you know, probably because the tapes were played a zillion times and, you know, the, the, before they realized they were erasing part of the information. And, and the other thing is that uh, they left off two songs that, I, that we recorded and were actually already mixed and everything it was ready to go. And I'm like, what? How could you do that? You know, it, it, the story isn't complete now. Cut to 2016. Uh, I've worked for many years to try and uh, to uh, make amends for what I had done, you know, and to, to try and um, patch it up with the guys in, in BOC. And uh, I'd say by, by 2012, there was some sort of reunion. I think it was a 40, 45th or 40th anniversary of, uh, well, no, it had to be 45th anniversary of, uh, of uh, Agents of Fortune. So I, I uh, participated in that, and we played at, uh, in Times Square, and uh, I played with them a few songs, like three or four songs, maybe five songs, I think. And it was all great, and it was really nice, and Alan was there, and Joe was there. We all played, the five of us. And it was the last time we ever played together. But it was a great, great night, and of course, then everything started cooling. You know, everything started, you know, thawing out, you know. So uh, in 2016, it was in some other kind of anniversary, and so... Uh, uh, I I went on tour with them. I I did like a half a dozen shows with them. I played in L.A. two shows, and I played in London. I played in Dublin. I played in New York a few times, and uh, and so it was all it was great fun. And uh, but uh, earlier that year, and actually in December of 2015, Sandy Perlman had had an accident and he fell. I think he might, he might have had a stroke or something, but he fell and hit his head on a, a, a curb in a parking lot. And uh, he was in a coma. And so uh, Robert Duncan, who is a writer uh, from, who lives in San Francisco, he was taking care of him. I said, Robert, if he comes out of this coma, let me know, because I have things I have to say to him, you know, and I want him to hear it. Because by then, you know, the whole thing about him, I, I was sorry that I sued him. You know, I was sorry that the whole thing happened. I sorry that I, you know, was not more cooperative, you know. Um, and so, and, and I don't think I ever told him how much I appreciated everything that he'd done for me. So, so I wanted to go see him. So he did come out of the coma and I went to see him in February. And I spent two days in the hospital with him and basically for eight hours a day and i just you know i held his hand i sang all his favorite songs you know we, we talked about i mean i talked because he couldn't speak so i talked you know but he could respond he, he moved his left pinky and and he he could he could move his eyes so but, he could acknowledge what you were saying right so and he, he could understand and but he just couldn't communicate and, back yeah so i it was the most bizarre thing because usually when i was with him i couldn't get a word word in edgewise and here i am doing all the talking so anyway while while i was there i said you know um uh, sandy i promise you i'm going to redo the the album the way it should be i'm going to get a hold of those tapes i'm going to remix them i'm going to put the put the new songs on them and I'll make sure that, you know, that people get to hear it the way it's supposed to be. And, uh, and I said, and I'm going to do the other, you know, I'm going to do the bombs over Germany and, and mutant reformation albums too, because, you know, that's part of the story. 
So, you know, we talked about it when we were making the first one, you know, about what was going to happen after that. You know, I, I, I mean, both of us thought that this was going to be a huge record that, you know, was going to be our, our masterpiece, basically, you know, and then, you know, we'd have a follow up, you know, of, you know, the next chapter, you know, after the humanity has succeeded in destroying itself and, you know, and what happens after that, you know, so. Uh, so I told him that I was going to do that. And then of course, and I, but thinking that he might get better, you know, I mean, I didn't know that much about brain injury and, and all that stuff. And, you know, I'd heard that people could come out of, out of comas and, and come rel back to, you know, you know, uh, participating in life, you know, not being shut in, you know, that they could talk, learn to talk and walk and whatnot. So I was hoping that that was what was going to happen. But then I was on tour with Blue Oyster Cult in England and uh, I heard that he died. And so at that point I was like, that's it. That's it. I can't, I can't do it now because he's gone, you know, and, uh, and then in 2019, I started getting a lot of fans. I, for some reason, they started writing saying, um, hey, are you ever going to release your, your version of Imaginos? And so I had a little combo that I was playing with uh, a couple uh, for, former students, kids that had graduated, you know, and they were like in their 30s now, you know, from, from the school and one of the other school teachers. You know, David Hirschberg. So the four of us started working up these songs f from Imaginos. And I was kind of liking how it was coming out. And I, I had started thinking about like, well, what were the arguments we had that were he lost? And what, what would happen if I did it his way? Because I was really interested just as an experiment to see what would happen. So, and then COVID came. Yeah. And so I was like, ah, well, I guess I just have to do it by myself. I'll take whatever they did and I'll incorporate it into what I'm doing. And I, I redid most everything, but I used a little bit of what my students did. And of course, uh, they both, you know, because they, because of COVID, they ended up being more, more, they were essential workers, basically. One guy was a programmer for the robots and stop and shop and the other other person was a was a conductor on a subway train so you know they had real jobs so they couldn't they couldn't help me but david hirschberg uh came and he played all the bass on the record and and i did just about everything else i had uh some of the people on imaginos had given me guitar parts so we put that out and and when it was you know i i I'd, I'd gotten a new manager this guy jeff keller and who I've known for years, but you know, he decided that he wanted to manage me. He, I was feeling like, you know, I wanna, I'm planning on retiring from this, this school job and I, I wanted to have a manager, you know. So anyway, so the, the first thing the manager did was he got me a, a movie role, uh, which uh, fell through because of COVID, you know, cause then the next thing was COVID. And then, but right after that, he got me a record deal to put out a record and so I said, well, I have this Imaginos thing, and uh, and so I told it to the the record company Deco Entertainment, and they said, "Oh, that sounds great! You know, that's right up our alley." So I put it out. I made an announcement. I I uh, got a you know publicist to get me uh, interviews like such as what we're doing right now and the fans started writing me are you going to do the other two versions because uh, other two uh, uh, volumes and I s said it depends if this if this record sells I will do the other two and of course you know I made the charts I sold thousands of records I got a lot of money you know my, more, much more than you know, uh, uh, multiple times what I ever, I ever I made, and this was you know right, right off the as soon as it came out, there was the money was there. I was like, okay, I guess I have to do this. So then I was like, okay, this is going to be the next three or four years of my life. And so, that, and that, that brings us to to now, where you're yeah. currently promoting 
the final volume of the trilogy, yeah. Mutant Reformation. Uh, walk us through the story and creation of this final chapter. Um, I mean, did you guys, did you always know that there was going to be a third? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, well, not, not back in the beginning, not in 1967 when he was telling me the story, because he only got up to the part where humanity destroys itself, which is at the end of Bombs Over Germany. Mm -hmm. Oh, and so, uh, you know, at the end of World War Three. So I'm like, well, what would happen after that? You know, this is why we're making the, the original Maginos back in the 80s. And he said, oh, the mutant reformation. It's obvious. You know, that, that life, life, you know, if you think about it, the universe is teeming with life. You know, it's everywhere. You know, it, it, the idea that we're the, alone in the universe is preposterous, really. Well, so, and somebody else had already written Temples of Syrinx. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's lots of, <laughs> there's lots of things. I was just watching a, some UFO hearings this morning, the yeah. latest ones, and it's pretty pretty mind boggling. I mean, but the pe the people very knowledgeable people, very uh, you know, they're not crackpots at all. You know, they're nuts and bolts kind of scientists or you know um, people in the military or whatever. Mm -hmm. So oh, and they're talking yeah. about it right now. It's all yeah, coming yeah. out right now. Yeah. So, yeah. so he was like, that's what happens is that life life comes back you know it's maybe different from what we expected but um so the story and from from my perspective is that two things happen in in the mutant reformation number one is imaginos uh has a change of heart and he decides that he needs to make amends and he needs to you know uh and, and he he basically has to get rid of the mirror he has to, so he, they, he tries to destroy it, but it will not be destroyed. So the only thing he can do is try and put it in a place where nobody else can, can find it, you know, or, or can get to it. So, uh, and so that's a song that I wrote with Richie Castellano called Mountain of Madness, where he, uh, where he uh, finds a place to put the, the mirror that uh, is safe, you know, for the rest of the, for whatever is left. You know, and then then after that, it's when the aliens come back to Earth and kind of um, repopulate. And of course, there was the girl that loved me blind, who was in the very first. You know, the whole thing with the girl that loved me blind was she, she takes this drug that makes her live forever, and then they send her into space. So she's out there. So it seemed uh, obvious that she has to come back. So that's basically the, the whole entire story. You know, the, the, the mutants come up and, and oh, and there's also robots. There's robots that still kind of work, you know. So there's the robots, the mutants, and the aliens. And that's how, where it ends, you know. And then I, I tacked on uh, Buddha's knee at the end because that is the first song I wrote with Sandy. And, and so it's the last one in the trilogy. And who knows, you know, it could be that, uh, you know, it all ends at a, at a Buddhist shrine in Japan, you know. Having completed the trilogy, looking back, uh, yeah. what do these albums mean to you personally, since I, they've been wound up in your story for, for <sighs> so gosh darn long? Yeah, it feels great. It feels great. You know, I mean, uh, sometimes interviewers will say, well, what's next, you know, and there's plenty next. The next thing is this is the comic book, the graphic novel. So the, I think they're going, sh the idea is they're gonna do, they're gonna release them just like they did uh, the records one at a time. So the first one is done. It's being printed as we speak. So it, I think it's something that's, every fan of BOC is gonna wanna have it. What do you think Sandy's favorite song would be off the new record? Off the new one? Uh, I think, I think he would like the new version of heavy metal. Al, thank you so much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, Albert Bouchard. Thank you, David. My pleasure.